Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amobi Okugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by Atlanta United midfielder, Mo Adams. Uh, we'll be getting to know Mo and talking about his soccer journey. I know L is excited. You know, we got a Atlanta, Atlanta's very own on the show today. Uh, Mo, sure, how you doing? Sure. I'm good, I'm good. How you guys been? No, Chilling, good. Man. So good. Real, you know. real quick, I see your bookshelf behind you. Yo, you got Darlo Rules. You got some good ones real quick. Yeah, I got some good ones, man. Um Can you give us uh, some of your favorites. Honestly, so Alex Ferguson leading. That's uh okay. probably one of my favorites. Um of Kobe, of course, Mamba Mentality. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that one. Rest in peace, um, Kobe. Yeah, man, yeah. The dollar rules are pretty cool. So oh, I, I, I haven't read all of them yet, but I'm getting I'm getting there slowly but surely. Nah, no yeah. worries. Yeah, I'm currently I'm currently yeah. got it on my desk as well. So that's why it like immediately started. Oh nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know we're gonna get into that, you know, you being a scholar and you know, but we start off with everyone, two truths and a cap. Uh so I'm sure Elle's going to give us the rundown. Uh, please take it easy on me. I, I've been struggling when it comes to <laughs> things, so, uh, but let's let's get it. Yes, sir. So two truths, two truths in the cap. Um, so Mo, this is an icebreaker game that we like to play here, mm. where you'll give us three facts about yourself. Two will be true, one will be a lie, and Moby and I have to guess what the lie is. So whenever you're ready, take it away. Cool. So we're going to find out how, how good of a liar I am, okay. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. No. Um. Three facts about me. Um, all right, I have three siblings. I'm fluent in Arabic, and unfortunately, I'm an Arsenal fan. He said, unfortunately. Ooh. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's a tough time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Fluent in Arabic. I'm going to say that's the cat, because um, you're retreating. I don't know if they speak Arabic out there, but I don't think so. So I'm going to say that's the cat. Did you? Uh, let me go three siblings. I think you got like two. Yeah. Nah, both wrong, man. Uh, Arsenal, wow. me, me, me. <laughs> no, me being an Arsenal fan is, uh, is the cap. Yeah, oh, so I am. I am actually fluent in Arabic and uh, yeah, I have three siblings. Nice. Yeah, I know. So who do you support? Oh, yeah. I support United. So oh. very fortunate to be so at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got it good right now. No, no, it's uh, it's an exciting time to be United fan, definitely. Nice. So, so you think you think they take it? You think they take the uh, title? The Prem this year, honestly, with Ronaldo in your team now, that's like twenty goals, you know, guaranteed up front. I feel like you know, he just obviously bagged the brace yesterday. Almost got a hat trick. Uh, missed a penalty for Portugal, but nah, man, he's just gonna lift the team in every way he can. You know, he's a leader. He's been there. He came. He saw. He conquered, and he went back and decided to come back again. So. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Chelsea are up there. I'll say United will be top two. I'm not sure whether they'll take it this year or not. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And Arsenal, you think they get relegated? No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. We're not getting relegated. Who, who, is, who is it? The keeper that you signed now? He's been relegated with every club he's been at? Oh, uh, Runnison. Yes. Oh, Ram Sheffield. Ramsdale or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, yeah Ramsdale. That's Ramsdale. He's yeah. been relegated with every club he's been at, so I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we'll see. So yeah. obviously you're, you're you know you're from England, uh, you're a United supporter, so you have a you know rich soccer history. But when did you fall in love with soccer? Fall in love with soccer, to be honest, probably age of five, six. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't really come from like a soccer background at all. You know, um, I'm the only athletic one I'd say in my in my family right now. The only one who's really plays a sport. Mm -hmm. um, you know, brothers into photography. I have a little brother who's older brothers into photography. A little brother who's eleven who's Trying to find his way, um, uh, and then obviously time. he's only eleven. Yes, time, yes, time, right? Yeah, but when I was at the age of eleven, it was different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I have a sister. Obviously, she's not into sport at all. But for me, it was just, I guess, growing up. I mean, in Eritrea, of course. Um, I'd say soccer is obviously the number one sport over there. But it wasn't until I got to England when I realized, like, man, it's actually like crazy here. You yeah. know, the Premier League obviously is is worshipped over there, and. And I think, you know, every day I had a soccer jersey on. So it was just constantly, you know, a way of life for me. And then joining a school team and then joining an academy at the age of 10. Um, and just kind of working my way up. And then I think at the age of 10 or 11, when I joined Nottingham Forest is when I 
probably realized like, hey man, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. That's when it kind of turned into a dream of mine, you know? Um, but before that, it was more so just playing for fun. Um, but yeah, I'd say age of five, six is when I really fell in love with it. No, that's amazing. And can you talk yeah. a little bit more about your background? You know, I know Elle mentioned that you're Eritrean. Um, you said you speak uh, Arabic. Mm-hmm. You know, how did that all tie into, you know, you playing soccer? Obviously, I feel like soccer is the global game, you know. Correct, the, correct. Different ethnicities. How did correct. that all tie into, you know, what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, for those who don't know, Eritrea is a, is a small country in East Africa. Um, so, you know, being born there, lived, say, my childhood there, that alongside athletics is probably, you know, the most popular sport or uh, activity to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like there's there's a lot of Africans or, or this, you know, the continent of Africa is obviously known for, for soccer in a way of all, you know, the African players who, who play in Europe or maybe play for other nationalities and stuff like that. So for me, it was just playing for fun, man, in the streets with my friends and whatnot. And then moving to England is kind of when it opened my eyes and really saw the beauty of the game also, you know, watching soccer on TV and, and playing with my friends in a more of an organized manner, you know, like a school team or yeah. or with like a soccer club and stuff like that. And that's when it kind of, I kind of realized like, hey, man, this is actually a really fun game and you could potentially pursue this as a career to really make something out of it. Um, but in terms of like speaking Arabic, you know, I'm Muslim. So that is the, uh, I guess, the, the language of the religion. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that's the reason of me, you know, speaking Arabic. It's what we speak at home over uh, in England and even growing up and everywhere. So say that's my problem my first language yeah i love it i love it so you've lived in england and the states where do you rank him england and say again rank england versus the states ah man you know what it is i I said the states but just because in the in in the united states obviously there's plenty of 50 states so i feel like you get a different vibe of where we go whereas in england you know from top to bottom it's pretty much the same thing Okay. Um, so just purely for the fact that you kind of get different, um, looks at the U S and different, you know, more of a different vibe really, wherever you are, whether it's East coast, West coast, different states, different cultures. So I'd say probably the U S in terms of, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rank that. I, I just, that is my only reason. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I just yeah. had to ask. You just had to <laughs> yeah, ask. Yeah. No, no, I understand. So, right, cause I last, I want to stay on that for like a hot second. So like, what's your favorite, I would say state or city that you visited oh. since you lived out here? Man, like to be honest five. with you, yeah, for me, it's, it's Chicago, man. I mean, I played in Chicago before I came here, and oh. that's like, that's where I want to live, like, when I finish playing. Um, man, cool city. It reminds me, I mean, I went to up Syrac- Syracuse University, which is upstate New York. There's not much up there, but we travel to kind of New York City every now and then. And Chicago reminds me like a, a cleaner version, a smaller, more tidy right. version of New York. So it's got everything you need in the city, a nice lake, tall building. Yeah. Okay. Just beautiful sightsee. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the top three cities. Yeah, right. yeah. To double down on that, because me and Al have had multiple guests in the past, Chicago pizza or New York pizza? Honestly, I, I like the deep dish, but I'd say New York. Oh, okay. You? I'm assuming Chicago. <laughs> no, nah, I'm, 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 I'm going to go with Chicago style. Really? Me personally, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll go with New York style. Yeah, that's, that's in New York. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so you mentioned, you know, Syracuse, obviously, you know, at the age of 10, you said you went to Nottingham Forest Academy. Mm -hmm. Um, usually that's like the step you go pro from there, like Academy pro, that's how it goes. But you decided to go to the States and pursue, um, you know, education, go to college. What was that process like? What was the decision making behind that? Honestly, to be honest, I feel like, you know, I'm I'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. Right. Mm -hmm. And that decision was kind of made for me in a way because, you know, I, I didn't get professional. So after not, I left Nottingham Forest at the age of 15. So I was there from 10 to 15 and then joined Derby County, which is another uh, team that's in the championship right now. Yeah. And I was there for two years, didn't get a professional contract. So I went to trial at Blackburn Rovers, another team in the championship. Um, and I did very well, got offered a professional contract, but literally a couple of days after I had been verbally offered the contract, I got injured, snapped three ligaments in my ankle uh, for seven months. Um, so it was a tough period, especially in England. It's so competitive that once you yeah. have that time out of the game, it's tough for you to kind of go back in the same level or in the same, uh, yeah, situation that you were at previously. So, you know, I tried at different clubs and it just kind of didn't really work out over there because I had to drop down, you know, a few tiers and, let, you know, the I guess if it's not the Premier League, Championship League one, then it kind of just falls off pretty bad over there. Um, so, yeah, and then I was like, man, I don't really have a degree. I don't 
really play for a team right now. So what can I do? And then I, uh, there's an agency called Vertex Soccer who kind of got in touch with me and said, hey, like, you know, we feel like you can go out to the U.S. on a scholarship, do really well. Um, the worst case, you could, I mean, the worst thing that could happen to you is just you leave with a degree. And I was yeah. like, man, like, that's something I don't really have right now. So I was like, I, you know, I shoot my shot and see where it takes me. And um, yeah, I ended up getting a GA deal. So I left school early to turn pro and I'm actually completing my degree online right now. So thankfully I got the best of both worlds. No, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Talk about like the learning curve, you know, coming from England, you know, high level academy, you know, you see what it's like, you know, promotion relegation to come into like the college space where there's a three month season. Uh, I see had to adjust. Um, mm-hmm. What was the biggest adjustment for you? Biggest adjustment for me was probably the condensed college season. I think it's wrapped in about three months, two months. And then for the spring, you just play for fun, really. Um, So (laughs) we're just kind of getting used to like, I don't know, just trying to stay, yeah, being disciplined, right? Because the spring's so fun. It's like in in, an academy in England, it's like a game a week, maybe two games a week if you're lucky. Um, so I kind of got tried to get used to like, okay, this is what we do. And if you don't make the NCAA tournament or something like that, your season could be done pretty early. Yeah. So we just kind of to, you know, stay, you know, switched on. You're here for a reason. You're here to try and be pro. So don't kind of go down the, the, the wrong route or whatnot. So just, yeah, that, I think that was the main thing for me. And just to kind of help out um, friends and, you know, like I have a lot of friends who I talk to now who've always wanted to go to the States and mm-hmm. I've done like every Christmas or every winter break, I go back to England to like academies and we have like a little workshop where I kind of talk about my time uh, over in the US and stuff like that. And one of the main things that the kids ask is, how is it like being away from home? Um, so I think being able to uh, to adjust in terms of, you know, being in a team environment, but having to not, you know, go see your family on weekends or stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it kind of allowed my... I guess teammates to really become my home away from home and become my new family in a way. Um, so I think that was the adjustment for me. No, oh, that's amazing. And talk yeah. about talk about the, your time at Syracuse because uh, you guys got some you guys some talent. There's a a good run. Oh, we had a sick team. Yeah, yeah. You guys had yeah, Miles too, right? Yeah, yeah. Really? Miles Buchanan, come on, Miller. Yeah, had a like, sick team. Uh, yeah. It, it, if it was basketball or football, they would be asking, you know, how much y'all y'all how much they're giving you. Nah. <laughs> Besides the scholarship, nothing, man. That's yeah. amazing. I know Ben Polk went there too. Uh, oh, Ben Polk, yeah, Ben Polk. That's nah, the team, team. I mean, Ian McIntyre, head coach, is a great guy. He actually came all the way to England to recruit me. So he was in my living room chatting to my parents, like, you know, he really tried to get the point across that this was going to be a great decision for me moving forward. So, you know, I thank him for that. We still talk, and you know, I credit him, you know, largely for really allowing me to live my dream. No, that's what it's all about. So yeah. I think it's important. Like you talked about the talent that you guys had, like iron sharpens iron, especially at a college you know, environment. If you can get to like a program that's going to, you know, develop you, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. EA, that, that's, I mean, that makes the world a difference. Yeah. Just to add to that as well, like, I know you asked me like what the biggest adjustments were um, from the UK to the US. I think in the US, there's a lot of guys on the team who don't necessarily want to pursue soccer as a career. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, maybe they're on a, you know, academic scholarship and, you know, they're like, you draw the sport, so they'll be on the team. Whereas in England, everybody in my academy team really wanted to kind of live this, you know, wanted to mm-hmm. to be pro. That was, you know, no questions asked. That was the, the dream. So it was just to kind of uh, find the balance between everybody, you know, how to work alongside everybody. You know, the talent obviously isn't the same from top to bottom, right? So it was mm-hmm. just that, that was, I think, the difference. And trying to get everybody to buy in, even if it wasn't everybody's, you know, dream or everybody's goal to, to get drafted and go into the league. What's one thing that you would do to like kind of fix the development in the States, you know, being from England, um, you know, what are some things that you would take from England to apply to the States? And then what are some things from the States that you apply to England? Cause there's, you know, pros and cons to each mm. you know, development system and each style, you know, I'd say, more so in the US, I'd say, I'd say one thing from the, the UK that I'll take over to the US is maybe don't emphasize the spring season too much as like a let's run, let's get big. And I feel like a lot of it was just time spent in the weary room. I know, I know they have like a certain hours allowed on the field and stuff like that, but I just never really understood that because you're just taken away from these kids' development, right? And it's that's just something I never really understood because you know this captain's practice and the coach can't be out with the team right now and stuff like that you know like we're there to, to try be as, as as good of athletes and as we are in the classroom so just emphasize it in the same way right so that was a thing that i never really understood that kind of 
was was pretty annoying for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and from the US to go over to the UK, uh, man, tough question. I'd, I'd say have the college system. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, I don't think a draft is ever going to happen in England, but yeah. um, just just have something that will bridge the gap because a lot of people, man, who were high prospects growing up over, like I've had a lot of friends who were playing for, you know, like elite academies, you know, the Chelsea's, the Tottenham's, mm-hmm. the Arsenal's, and, you know, these guys are prospects that go to the Prem and, you know, like live out, you know, their dream. And they fall off and then they're not, they're not really doing much, you know, they just go down the wrong road. So it's... I just, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know how to, to say it really, but because I know a draft isn't going to happen, but maybe like work, workshops or something to just kind of emphasize and educate like, hey, there's opportunities for you guys to go to the States. Because um, mm-hmm. it buys you time. That's the thing. In England, you get released at 18. There's no time. But here you get 18 year olds starting college. You got four years to try and do something. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, man, you run out of time quickly over there as an athlete. Yeah. I love how you said that, you know, there's, first of all, there's benefits and cons to each system. Um, but yeah. that, that cutthroat business in England, you know, you don't have Correct. time to develop, you know, everyone develops at their own pace. Um, and for you, Definitely. obviously you went GA. Can you talk about that? Getting drafted to Chicago. I think you were there with Dax and Schweinsteiger. What was that experience like? How was it as a rookie, um, you know, playing for a historic club like Chicago, obviously, um, <laughs> say it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. obviously it's not how it was but you had some good veterans there and you know you had a great rookie year so talk about that yeah yeah no um obviously going GA I think I think coming from England I was very determined to try and go pro as quick as I can right you, you come in like with a chip on your shoulder you know you played in the academy and stuff like that but I was just very motivated to try and you know get there as quick as I can and once the offer came around um you know, I think it was a no-brainer for me. It's what I wanted to do. Um, of course, I made a promise to my parents that I'll complete my degree and I'll finish my degree. And that's still a goal of mine that hopefully one day I will achieve. Um, but yeah, getting drafted to Chicago, to be honest with you, I had no preference of where, where I end up. I don't think I was as educated as I am now in terms of the US and, and the MLS in itself. So, yeah. you know, it was just kind of like, man, just take me somewhere because whether you drafted number one or you drafted in the fourth round or wherever it may be, you're still going in with the point to prove, right? So it didn't really make a difference for me. Um, but thankfully, I was drafted in the top 10 to Chicago. Great C. You know, I was fortunate enough to play alongside Schweinsteiger and, and uh, Dax in the middle. Two great leaders. You know, Schweinsteiger is a legend of this game worldwide. Uh, Dax, I think he just touched 400 appearances in MLS. So it's just crazy, man. Like, uh, learning so much from those two, you know, day in, day out, great people. Um, had the chance to play in Schweinsteiger's testimonial over in Munich against Bayern Munich. You know, they had, you know, the full team out in the yeah. Allianz Arena, 80,000 sold out. It was just incredible, man. These experiences that you just can't buy, you know, so I'm very yeah. blessed to, to kind of experience those things. Um, but yeah, we're still in contact. I still talk to them, you know. Uh, obviously, we're playing against Nashville every season, so I'm seeing Dax, you know, he's a very cool guy and, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see him still, you know, in this league, man. I think he's still got plenty of years left in the tank. No, but no, nah, uh, great time in Chicago. The fan base is great. Um, you know, I think I played there this season and I had, a, you know, got great reception, a lot of good messages from them and stuff like that. So I still, I still keep in contact with the people there. No, that's what it's yeah. all about. Uh, I think, like like you said, some of those experiences and like getting into an environment like that, whether it's yeah. Chicago or wherever, but like to play with two <laughs> veterans and, you know, there's some other veterans on the squad at that time that can help you, you know, with the ropes. I think mm. it's really important. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So um, can you describe, you talked about some of the like big memories. Describe your first uh, professional goal. You know, you scored in LAFC. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about that experience. Yeah, honestly, I got traded to Atlanta. I um, can't remember what day it was. And then the next day, like I got to the hotel, Got traded, went to the hotel in Atlanta, and then they're like, okay, you're on the squad for tomorrow's game. And that was against Houston at home. So I was like, man. And then I came on, last 15 minutes, you know, the reception, the stadium was like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. I feel like play, playing in Atlanta as an opposition is very intimidating because the crowd is like, on it's insane, you know, on top of you, you know, especially, you know, the fans, you know, the support section behind the goal is constantly bouncing, the flags are waving. But playing there like as a, I guess as a home home team, a home player, it's it's completely different, man. It's yeah. <laughs> you feel like you know you have a 12th man, you have the support of the of the fans, you know, no matter what happens. 
But no, and then next week, my second game, I guess my first start, uh, LFC away, man. And then I think it was my first touch I scored, actually. First you scored minute, early, right? Like, first, like... Minute, minute, minute and a half, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was mad, man. Like, and that I was like was a, a national TV game, right? I think I remember. Yeah, that, that was an ESPN game, yeah. Yeah, I remember so, that game. Yeah, just touch and then just hit it, man. <laughs> I hope so, it goes in. The, fan, the fans must have loved you, like, you know, within two games you score... You know, how did they work yeah. after that? No, of course, after that, you know, everything's, you know, on top of the world, really. You know, you, yeah. you make your debut, you know, the day after you sign. And then, yeah, I guess a week later, you're scoring in a the, in the game like that in the first couple of minutes. So, no, it's great. And I think, you know, a huge credit to Atlanta fans, man. Like, they obviously were recognized around the league, around the world. And you know, the fan base is, is insane. And um, through thick and thin, obviously, we haven't really reached the... Uh, the levels that you know we aspire to reach and where we need to be in the past couple of seasons, but regardless of that, you know they've still stuck with us, and you know, and I'm sure we'll turn turn it around soon and, and repay them back for, for all their, I guess, loyalty and constant support. Now you don't have to say that just because Els an Atlanta United supporter, man. <laughs> oh, oh well, we, we're gonna get there, man. I promise. <laughs> I see it, man. I see it. It's a yeah, got a super good squad. I think yeah. we're turning around. You know what I'm saying, shout out to, no, to Rob Valentino. Yeah, yeah. No, I love Rob, man. Yeah. I, I, I think what's so great about, like, what you just said is, like, the level of excellence that Atlanta United has for themselves. Like, it's it's not just like, all right, we're happy to make the playoffs or we're happy to be here. It's like, yo, like, we didn't make, you know, a big run or we didn't get a trophy this year. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. And uh, I think more teams need to do that. And yeah. not to downplay the previous team that you played for, but compared to what Atlanta United is doing. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's – uh, Definitely. I think the, the higher the targets that you set yourself is, you know, the, the I guess the higher the standards are that need to be met, you know? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so speaking of standards, obviously, it's been a crazy couple years, um, you know, with everything that's gone on. Uh, can you talk about, you know, some of the things that uh, you've participated in, you know, the campaigns of the Black Players for Change, um, their mission on equality, social justice and the access to the game? Um, how is it from your vantage point, you know, obviously being, you know, African-American, but, you know, from not, you know, sorry, I said you're African-American. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like. <laughs> yeah, being yeah, African, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, not being African-American, like born here, but, you know, still being a part of the situation. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think, first I want to credit, you know, you know, the guys, you know, from, I love that it's everybody from, you know, every single team in MLS coming together to do this movement. I think it was around, was it we're at the bubble, right? It was just before the, mm -hmm. the MLS's back tournament, you know, after George Floyd's uh, death and everything that was around it. Um, but no, I think, you know, we all kind of came together in that time and decided that, hey, man, if, if you know, if nobody's going to, you know, raise their voice or, you know, share what they feel or their opinion, and we didn't really have a platform for that, right? I think that in this this league in itself. So for us to be able to do that and come together and 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 kind of allow our presence felt, I think, and be able to share and be able to open and use our platforms in a way, um, and just kind of be be fearless in a way because a lot of people are very afraid of you know sharing their their opinion or sharing how they feel because they feel that they're going to be perceived or looked at in a different way. And I think with me or with a lot of people in the Black Face with Changes. You gotta speak, you gotta speak about what's right and what's wrong, regardless of how people view it. You know, right is right and wrong is wrong. And I think for us to be able to kind of share that uh on our platforms, and I remember when we, we protested on, on live television just before I think it was uh New York or it was a game, Orlando's game or something, yeah, where we the eight game. minute yeah, yeah, the, yeah Philly versus Orlando, I believe. Philly Orlando, that's what it was. Um and that was an ESPN and and I think I've said this before, and just the, the reach that that got worldwide was crazy because, like, my parents were watching Sky Sports one time and they, and they saw that and they were like, wow, something that we created over a Zoom call, you know, all the players just jumping on and just having these discussions was able to kind of transform into this, you know, worldwide message. Mm -hmm. um, and just the reception that it got was incredible. And I think, you know, it allowed a lot more people to, to kind of, you know, be open in terms of speaking, you know, to you know feel like okay this is right you know they did it why can't i share my opinion right um and that just wasn't you know black people it was like you know everybody every race culture background 
you know, kind of felt motivated to, to really talk about, you know, what was going on in the world at the time or still. No, for sure. And yeah. uh, thank you so much for, you know, doing your part, speaking out and, you know, making sure. some impact, you know, being from, you know, having a presence in England and obviously, you know, they face some of the same issues. Do you have any insight into, you know, how they can handle it or think things that are going on from that landscape as well? Over in England? Yeah. I mean, obviously we saw with the Euros, um, when the, let's say three young Kings, you know, missed the penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember like I was watching an interview with Saka and uh, Saka said, as soon as he missed, he was like, I knew this was about, this was going to come. Mm-hmm. Right. It's very, you know, three black players, you know, missed the penalty over in England in a time where the country was on, on top of the world. Right. You know, we haven't really won a major trophy since 66. So for him, for the first thought to come to his mind was, man, the racial abuse that I'm going to get now, like mm-hmm. forget that I missed the penalty. Right. Like that's obviously a, a very, devastating feeling but for yeah. him to constantly you know think that the abuse that's going to be thrown towards him uh man that's just that's just heartbreaking and of course you know people you know instagram twitter all these all these platforms you need to do a better job man because th- these like ev- everybody's able to share anything without yeah. any consequence right because they're able they can just put user 54362 and then different emojis different message <laughs> like <laughs> you know yes. so it's like they, they need to be able to kind of, you know, verify these people, you know, whether it's share your password or social security, whatever it may be, something has to be kind of put in place for you to have an official account to be able to say something or else I feel like these people who are hiding behind, you know, a, a yeah. fake identity or whatever it may be, will just keep saying what they, whatever they want to say. Yeah. You know, all these athletes are just kind of block it. I mean, Instagram did this thing where you can hide comments, right? Or yeah. allow people who, you, who follow you or you follow to comment. But, you know, people want to engage with fans. People want to exactly. re- receive positive messaging and, and kind of, you know, uh, just try and like know what people are thinking or maybe get credit for your performance or just whatever it may be. People express themselves, but you want to be able to do that in the right way. And I think, you know, until Instagram, Twitter, and all these social media accounts kind of put a stamp on and really uh, verify all these users, it's just gonna, it's just gonna keep happening, man. Mm-hmm. People are really not getting any punishment for that. And even some of these bands at the stadiums, like it's, they're very minor. You need to like really ban these people from attending games, you know, for life at that point. Yeah. Mo Adams for UA for president. Hey, come on, man. You know, (laughs) but let's, let's get into, obviously, you know, you're still playing. Uh, Congratulations. Happy for you back from injury. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to see him field soon. Talk about this season, you know, you know, coming to Atlanta, you know, high hopes that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, talk about this season, you know, if, if as much as you're willing to share, you know, from a personal standpoint, team standpoint. Yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I need you train, man. Come on. <laughs> nah, um, nah, this season has been tough, of course. Coming into this season, there was high expectations with, you know, maybe people would have thought we'd turn the corner. We had a full preseason on that about new coaching staff and stuff like that. Um, and unfortunately, things didn't really work out the way, you know, the club expected, the players expected. So, you know, it was probably time for a change, I think, you know, based on maybe the results, not only the results, a lot of things were happening and stuff like that within the club. But I think, you know, now, to, uh, thankfully, you know, we have someone like Rob, who's an incredible, not just an incredible coach, but an incredible person who everybody gets along with. You know, he's he's honestly probably, probably I'd say, he is the best coach I've, you know, ever been coached by or worked with. Um, and he just lifted, you know, the, the spirit of the group and really helped us, you know, kind of get back on track and fall back in love with the game and really enjoy training and enjoy going out there to compete. Um, and now, yeah, we have a new head coach, obviously, Gonzalo Pineda. And, um, yeah, we're all excited for for what this end of the season will hold for us. You know, we're obviously right now in aim of making the playoffs and getting into the playoffs and then taking it from there. So I think there's 12 games left, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, we're looking for... The W's now. Yeah. Okay. Well, best of luck as you guys make a late run. Hopefully, I appreciate uh, it. You know, Josef is not too frustrated tearing his jerseys up and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. I think nah, you guys, nah, so. <laughs> yeah, Real quick, though, describe what it's like playing with Joseph. I know we see, you know, watching on TV, we see the passion. We see, you know, he wears his heart on his on his sleeve on the field. Like, what's it like, you know, playing with him? Like, just in training. Yeah, no, nah, he's, he's, he's the same. Yeah, he's the same when in training, man. What you guys see at the 
at the stadium, on TV, in videos and in interviews. That's who he is, man. You know, he's he is who he is in every walk of life, I think. You know, whether he's training or whether he's in the canteen, whatever it is. Um, but no, I mean, he's a great competitor. He's a great player. And what he's done for the city of Atlanta, what he's done for Atlanta United, MLS, in what, five years now since Atlanta in the league? Like, it's it's incredible, man. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great player, great competitor. We, we obviously rely on him. We know what he can do. You know, he can help us by scoring lots of goals. And the standard that he has for himself, the standard he's set himself. And, of course, if he misses a header in the 90th minute, 93rd minute, which is a tough header, by the way, yeah. and that's his reaction. You know, that's the standard he has for himself. You know, he's known for scoring those. And I'm sure there's plenty more chances that they're going to come his way and that he's going to put them away. And, you know, he will help us move forward. Perfect. And then, like, real quick, before we get to the next thing, What's your favorite position? Because I know you play multiple positions, main position, center mid. Mm. What's your favorite position? And then five aside. If you had a five aside team, who are you picking? From my team? From uh, the world? Uh, anywhere. Yeah. Uh, anywhere. Okay. Um, favorite position? I'd say deep, deep midfielder. So the six. Okay. The six. Um, more, more, yeah, the deepest one. Um, so yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's my favorite. But in terms of five aside. Say goalkeeper Edison. I think he's incredible with his feet. Okay. Um, man, Van Dyke. Can't go wrong with him, just leaving back. So that's two. Can't uh, have to get Messi in there. It's three. Put myself, both. Can't leave myself. Yeah, perfect, you know? <laughs> can't, can't leave myself. That's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And then one more player, Neymar. Okay. By the side, you got to have Neymar in there. Yeah, yeah. decent team. Yeah, not bad. I'm sure they won a few games. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, El, what you got? Or you want me to take this? Uh, yeah, let's jump into some rapid fire questions yeah. real quick. So, being of Eritrean descent, um, what impact, if any, did Nip Nipsey Hustle have on you? Great artist. You know, first of all, his music, I think it's it's poetry, man. You know, if uh, I think a lot, a lot of the songs nowadays, it's you just kind of listen to the beat and if something sounds cool, that's fine. But I think with him, you really got to listen to to the message that he's sharing. And there's a lot of you know hidden stories and stuff like hidden messages, punchlines, wordplay in there. That's that's incredible, man. He's, I'd say he's one of my favorite artists. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, he's he's an Eritrean, of course, and he's. I don't, I don't think a lot of people know that he's Eritrean. To be honest, obviously, he's he's lived in in that. In LA, for I think I don't know if he's born in the US or not, but you know he's been yeah, here so. the majority of his life. Yeah. So, but yeah, we trained descent. Yeah, he was born. Man. He was born in the US, but he said like once he visited back home, the motherland, um, that's like what changed his whole like life. In yeah, terms of how he viewed it. No, there's a there's a I think you know is it Isaac that plays for uh, the Sweden? Yeah, Sweden national team the striker. He's also retrained. Um, no, there's a few man. So yeah. Oh. All right, so favorite restaurant? Well, we're gonna do UK and Atlanta, and we can yeah. we can add in Chicago too, since since you love that city so much. <laughs> nah, UK. I think if you ask any guy from the UK, I'll say Nando's. It's oh, okay. It's, yeah, okay. You're gonna have to. We had we had a Nando's in Chicago, so for that, no, I'm not gonna say yeah. Nando's in Chicago too. Um, Chicago, Sunda probably. Okay. It's like a, a Thai, like Thai Japanese kind of restaurant, you know. Um, and then Atlanta, man, there's a few. Umi is nice. Gypsy Kitchen is nice. Iberian Pig, yeah, I can't really pick one. You know, I'm just okay. Perfect. All right, pre-match playlist. What you knocking? Honestly, there's a. I don't know if you guys are into like English rap at all. Um, if yeah, not, I'll put you guys on. Bit, yeah, yeah, a little bit. You dabble. Uh, so Dave, he's he's an artist. Santan Dave, he just released his album. Um, yeah. Him, the D, D Block Europe, they're another group. Um, and then probably Drake, man. Drizzy, just anything from Drake's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he comes out. His uh, album comes out tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. So if I love a boy. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into one of our favorite segments of the show, No Car, Yellow Car, Red Car. So this is a rapid fire segment where I'll read off some news headlines. It could be pop culture, it could be sports related, it doesn't matter. 
Um, but what does matter is how we rate these headlines, which is using the soccer card system. So mm -hmm. no card is, you know, cool with it. I agree with it. Uh, yellow card is I can go either way. And red card is, you know, obviously I disagree, you know, foul. I'm not cool with that. And then you kind of give a little explanation of why you gave it that card. Um, so cool, that cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so we got one this week. Um, UEFA are officially working on a new system that will replace the financial fair play and will place a salary cap and luxury tax system similar to sports in the U.S. So what card are we giving this? you know, these changes that UEFA are proposing? Nah, red card. Red card. <laughs> yeah, I'd say for me, it's just, you're kind of holding the sport back in a way. I know that it, there's a big gap between, you know, club spending and everything like that, but mm -hmm. man, as, as a fan, you, you enjoy that, you know, you want to see the sport just go off really and just, you know, play joining different teams. And you know, I think it just, I think that's what holds the MLS back in a way too. I know it's rapid fire, but yeah, that's my explanation. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I love freedom, you know, freedom of play, really. Freedom of spending, obviously not bizarrely, you know, like the Super League and all that, just complete nonsense, but yeah, uh, fair play, I mean, yeah. Okay. What you say, Moby? Yeah, I'll give it a yellow card. I mean, similar to the same reasons as Mo, like you, if a team wants to spend, if an owner's like, yo, I want to provide these resources for my team, all right, then yeah. we just stop them. Um, but obviously within reason, you know, you're not trying to tamper contracts or yeah, 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 yeah. So I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, we want to play like a men's league and have an adult league and do participation, then all right, let's keep it all even. But for this, yeah. like, no, nah, we're good. Gotta let if you want to rock out, invest more into the squad. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, see. Like I think you look at teams like Barcelona, like Real, how they kind of ended up in these financial, uh -huh. uh, these financial straits that they're in. You know, bloated salaries, stuff like that, and they kind of get stuck with these players. Um, I think it could be smart for them. You know, yeah. like you're, yeah. you're going to find a way like around financial fair play. Like there's always going to be a way to finesse it. Um, but I think for some teams, they need a salary gap. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? For their own good. I think you know? I think a lot of it's just being smart, really. I mean, look at the signings PS, PSG made this year. A yeah. lot of them are free, you know. If you can kind of finish your way around it, you won't have to, you know, not be able to sign a star player like like Messi and Barca were this year, or players have to take a pay cut in order to sign Aguero, for example, stuff like that. So, I think like like you said, you know, you just got to be be smart with it overall. No, uh, it's just simple, simple math and simple discipline. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mo, thank you so much for taking time to get on the show. I know you got, you course, got a man. busy schedule. Uh, if people want to connect with you, if people want to follow you, uh, how can they do that? Yeah, uh, Instagram, Twitter, both at underscore Mo Adams. So that's where you find me. Uh, perfect. So sure. we're going to have all that in the show notes. Uh, L, you got anything before we close out? Not that's it, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. That's the Appreciate luck it. on your rehab. Um, praying you come back strong. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, most definitely. We'll be on the lookout. So that's our show for this week. Subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC. Check out our merch at Two Cents Sports.shop. If you enjoyed the show, consider dropping us a donation using the link in the description. It helps support the cost of the show. It helps us get wonderful guests like Mo Adams on the show. Uh, tweet us your comments on the show and any topics you want me or El to discuss. The only show where you're getting unfiltered thoughts and opinions every Friday. Catch you guys later. Two Cents FC. Peace out. Peace.